first of all, what I'm wondering about is casually listening to Leaf's Lunch the other day. Oh, no. And yeah. And, and some girl named Kylie wrote into Leaf's Lunch talking about her, her dirt bike <laughs> and how she put it through her dad's garage door. And I can't imagine there's too many Kylies out there who are massive Leaf's Lunch fans. So was that you, dear? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe she <says. laughs> So first of all, before we get into the, the podcast, what's the story? And, and what what compelled you to write Leaf's lunch about it? It, well, it was it was on no, there's no video, sadly. It was long before the days of uh, smartphones. But um well, my brother would always teach me how to drive after drive his dirt bike, but he'd be on the back. So this one day, a couple of cousins are at my house and I'm like I can do it, you know, get off. Right. And he's like, okay. So for whatever reason, I was facing like the house, like I was going in my driveway instead of going out. I don't know. I just pinned her, panicked, hit the door. <laughs> and that was it. It was a Kylie shaped hole in my dad's garage door. And uh, yeah. So like I had Leaf's lunch on the other day and she was, uh, Andy was telling an embarrassing story. So of course, while I'm on Twitter, like going through my phone, they tweet, do you have any embarrassing stories? Blah, blah, blah. So I tweeted it. Nice. <laughs> Oops. Well, there you go. You're famous. Bit of whiskey I know. And then she started talking about it. I was like, please don't, please don't, please don't. And she <laughs> She did. <laughs> well, on that note, I think we'll welcome everybody to, uh, I guess this is officially episode one, season one, episode one. Wow, season one, imagine. Um, <laughs> of the Deke Snipe Silly podcast with your hosts, Kylie Murren, Chad Newman, and myself, Ryan Gates. Um, we did a pilot last week uh, to try this out, and it was very well received. We had a lot of people who gave us a lot of good feedback and enjoyed it. So we said, let's try it again. Well, I guess we'll continue to do it until people hate it. So hopefully that doesn't happen right away. No. No. But um, oddly enough, uh, we were going to stretch this out a little longer, but it's just so much happened in such a short period of time, uh, certainly in, in the Leafs camp in uh, uh, three games, uh, a bunch of waiver activity. There's been a, a ton of stuff happen in a very short period of time just for the Leafs alone. And we'll talk about some things around the league as well. But I guess it would be... Uh, uh, poor in poor taste if we didn't talk about the Leafs games first <laughs> uh, kind of got to well yeah I mean <laughs> it's kind of where we're like I said where our loyalties lie so I think we'll get into that off the hop Let's do it. so game number two we already discussed the, the Leafs uh, first, game. first game with the Habs can game we just two. pretend game two didn't happen like just you no. know <laughs> well last night made me forget about it a little bit more but yeah 100 percent. and even the even the third game helped me forget about it especially where it was back to back that that definitely helped <laughs> it, it's it's amazing what a win will do to the to leafs twitter you know what i mean like <gasps> I, I after a loss like the ottawa one i i mean aside from being a, a, a devastated fan myself i i got online i was like this is not helping me at all no, it's been better I mean, I know it really is. You're better off. You're better off away from it. So, um, but yeah, the last two games certainly helped things along. But we still got to talk about the first game against Ottawa. Now, a lot was made after the game uh, about uh, the Leafs were terrible all game and and they didn't show up and there was no effort and and that's not the way I seen it. You know, like the first period, I thought was, I thought I thought the Leafs were the favorite in the first period. To be honest. I thought they played well. They opened scoring. I mean, off the, off the hop, they, they were in, had the lead until like 30 seconds left or something. Shabbat scored at 19, 20, something in the first. Um, but aside from that, I mean, there was a few disjointed plays and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, a little, was, bit of, little bit sloppy. It was definitely sloppy, uh, for sure. But I mean, they, they looked reasonable. Um, so, I mean, after the first period, it's, we're going into the second tide. Uh, the first 10 minutes of the second period was as good a Leafs hockey as you're going to see. I thought. I, I thought I, for I, sure, like, the, the game was, you know, they could keep it. Yeah. You know, like, they were playing finally like a team for a few minutes. <clears throat> then it all yeah. fell apart. Overall, I felt it was uh, pretty flat. I just felt, I think they uh, had a hard time finding each other and getting it together. And plus, you're playing Ottawa, who who knows what you're getting with Ottawa. Yeah. At times, they look like they've been together four or five years and other times they look like exactly what they are instant rebuild yeah. um so i think the leaves were kind of just flat getting into the game i just it just looked uninterested mm -hmm. but i know it was just uh just a lot of misplacements and uh 
just found, trying to find it. I found it was a lot of, I think I even tweeted about it that it was like the puck was bouncing a lot. Like they would try to pass it and it would just kind of just bounce off over yeah. stick or it would, you know what I mean? They completely just miss the puck or then someone would fall down. It was just completely a miss in it's shambles. A sloppy, yeah. I think I might've explained it as in shambles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. The, the thing which, which I think really upset the apple cart for the Leafs, because again, it's not a talent issue. It's a, it's a, it's a head game for them. 100%. Um, they, they lost the lead to, with the Brady Kachuk goal. That would have been the two to one goal. Mm-hmm. But then, then like two minutes later, it was three to one. And just like the damaged fans that we are, I think the team kind of went on a spiral from there. I think if, if, that, if that goal hadn't went in so, so hastily, two minutes Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was the Austin Watson goal at that. I mean, it's, he's not exactly your your sniper no. either. You know what I mean? So they, they're giving up a bit of a, a bit of a rough goal there. They um, scored four straight, did they not? Like four. Uh, goals. Let me just. Ottawa, I'm pretty four, sure. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. JT came back to make it five on three, yeah. if I remember. Yeah. yeah. Like. Ugh. Yeah. Too little, too late at that and point, they unfortunately. Had just back to back power plays. And yeah. yeah, just bad, bad news. And, and what does it just say? It was, it was to chalk it to 10 minute mark, Watson at the 12 and a half or 12, 12 minutes, two minutes, anyway. And then before five minutes had passed total, uh, they scored their third goal of yeah. the period. Like there were five goals or three goals in, in five minutes, right? I mean, yeah. that, that was at that point, the team was out of it. They were playing iffy as it was. And uh, for Riley and Brody, I think there were like, a, was it something that's a combined minus seven or something? Yeah, yeah they were. There was. Yeah. Brody had a terrible, terrible game. Yeah. Terrible. He did. He did kind of reward himself afterwards with the other games, but yeah. oh god, a lot of like Leafs Twitter was given up on him Friday night. Yeah, I don't. I don't put it all on Freddie. He, uh, you know, no. a couple muffins, but he had not nothing in front of him really stopping it from yeah. coming. So no, like I said to uh, one of the comments there on the Facebook group, um, like when a player can skate past five opposing players and then score a goal you can't blame it solely on the goalie no. you know what i mean like no 100 yeah. percent. i mean i i'm not i wasn't overly impressed with fred's game in game two uh but i wasn't impressed with anybody else's game either except john Tavares. yeah well, i oh, thought i thought so jt had a nice game. Yeah. yeah i mean even in even in that travesty of a second and third period when he was on the ice, he still was engaged. He, there's something different about Tavares this year. Uh, like I, I've been watching him even in, in the pregame skates, watching him when he's on the bench. I got this up, unhealthy obsession with John Tavares anyway. Uh, but uh, you're not the only one. Well, don't I don't blame know. you. Don't blame you. But uh, but like I'm just I'm constantly watching the guy. I mean, like he just seems so. I, well, I think he understands the significance of this year. He's probably not going to have a better team than the one the Leafs have this year mm-hmm. anymore. Like the team's not going to get any better than this, I don't think. Maybe no, I'm wrong. Honestly. Well, I mean, it can get better, but but I mean, ha, ha, I mean, how much, right? So I think a... I think he sees he sees where where he has an opportunity. The team has an opportunity, mm-hmm. and he just seems so intense, like more so than ever, you know. And I love yeah. that. He does though. He always mm-hmm. seems intense, but like whatever it was, even the game last night. I know we're going to get to that, but I don't know. There's just something different about his game. He's a machine. I'm really liking it. Yeah, he's a machine. Yeah. I think last year too, the last season, it's you know had the new dad. You know, a lot of adjustments, new yeah, city, new players like, coming in. Yeah. La- last year was just a total write off for a lot of people, not just not just John Tavares, but like Mitch Marner. A lot of people had just an off year, but yeah. he's definitely redeeming himself so far. And we're Big only thumb. what four games in or whatever it is. So six points. I mean, yeah. he's a machine. Yeah. yeah well, he's leading, leading I think he's leading is he leading the league right now I think or at least that, leading leading uh, the, uh, the conference yeah There's a there's a ha- handful of players who got 6 points but him and Mariner are two of them Wow Yeah, yeah. so I that's like it. that's good news Uh my, well seeing as we're talking about points and players and 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 performers what about Justin Hall until last night he was leading all defensemen in scoring I know Honestly. super small sample size but like yeah. what he's like four or five assists now or something he's got four points in four games yeah so I mean now I mean that being said his responsibility his 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 not bad for an ECHL graduate. Well, no. that's that, that's the first thing. I mean, you look yeah. at where he came from, but I mean, he's 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 still he's still a number four defenseman on this team, right? 
Um, he always will be, I think, or at least, you know, unless someone yeah. else comes in I to steal his spot. I think top four but, is great, though. Yeah. Right, and he's at a, he's first, like, at a steal right now. Like, what yeah. did he sign for? Three million or something? Two. Two million. Two. Yeah. There you go. I mean, that's the guys that you need, and here you're showing top up. four, and, like, he's on our shutdown pair with Muzz. Like, I mean, you can't go wrong. He's, and he's, he's blocking shots, and he's, he's getting it done everywhere. He's a big guy, ever. too. So I kind of, like, not that I wanted to trash him in the pilot, I was saying if there was any weakness in that first game, maybe Justin Hall, but it's a it's a weak complaint. Anyway, I take it all back. I mean, the guys just get oh, done. No, big yeah. time. I uh, yeah, he has four four assists in four games played. Like yeah, yeah, but it, he's got a, a bunch plus of, three plus three bunch of blocks, right? Yeah. A bunch of hits yeah. too. Not no, I should say a bunch, but relatively speaking, when you're talking about the Leafs, any hits is a bunch. any hits is yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, right? hey. Doing so, all the right things and he's doing it really well so far. Yeah, I mean, well, the fact that he won that job over. A Travis Dermott who has more NHL games, right? That that's that's the key thing. Zach Bogosian, no one expected him to play in top four anyway. But the point being, no. uh, Hall was the obvious choice, being a right shot to play that spot. And I got to say, man, uh, he's been on the ice for a lot of goals, even strength, right? Because I mean, let's let's face it, he got four points. None of them are on the power play because he doesn't play no. on the power he play. Land about, exactly. Right. Yep. right. So how many even strength points does John Tavares have? How many even strength points does Mitch Marner have? No yeah. more than Justin Hall. And nope. that stretch pass to Hyman last night. Oh. I mean, that was that was savage. Yeah, and and I mean, and I mean, he's he's. I mean, I remember when Justin scored his first NHL goal. It was a Me really, too. it was really pretty goal. Memory came down to wing, almost like almost yeah. like a winger, and cut across the front of the net. It was just yeah. beautiful, beautiful goal. Yeah. And I see he's joining the rush a lot more like that now. Like he does. Yeah, he's kind of turning himself into like an offensive defenseman, and I'm yeah, top four. I'm, so yeah, I'm here. Coming. I'm here for it, honestly, because yeah. like I said, I've I've kind of watched him all through. Like even with the Marlies, I kind of always had an eye on him because he did get called up and then sent back, if I remember correctly, and then he came back up again the following year and made the team right out of uh, training camp, if I remember. But I remember when he did score that goal. It was if I I think it was. It was just, yeah, it was his first game, but it wasn't on the dad's trip or something, if I remember. I think I remember that game. But anyway, uh, a better memory to me. But yeah, that's a, that's I remember good weird, there. weird things. But if I remember, if it wasn't him, it was Dermot. One of them did score their first goal on the dad's trip. Um, uh, I think it might have been Hall, actually, because remember he had two, two, two goals in two games. Yeah, and then if I, yeah, and I think he, he ended up getting sent back to the Marlies because that was the year they won the cup. But uh, then I think he made the training camp right out of that, if I remember. Called, called her cup. Cup. Sorry, I can't say the cup. Yeah, I can't say the cup. <laughs> yeah, but no, I remember, uh, like I said, prior to Hall uh, making the Leafs, I remember that year I had been following the, the, the year prior to, I had been following the DeMar, at least like I do. And this guy, this Hall on defense, like in, on the stats anyway, because I mean, I only get sporadic Marley's games of coverage, right? But uh, on, the st- on the stat line, he was always there. He always had points, hits, blocks. So I was like, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know that they had him in the system. That's how sad the situation was with my knowledge of Justin Hall, you know? Yeah. So, um, no, anyway, that's that's a lot of loving on Hall. That's got to be the most love Justin Hall's ever got on. <laughs> probably, <laughs> yep, definitely probably well, will ever get on our podcast. Before. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, a super small sample size, but, I mean, I, I just like, aside from points, points being what they are, I thought he's had a, a good four games. Um, game two wasn't great for anybody, but he still didn't stand out as one of the poor defensemen in game in the second game. I honestly feel like um, if I know we've had, like you said, a small sample size, but I feel like mostly everybody that's on that roster that was there last year has taken a step at least even in the slightest, everybody has, I can't say there's anybody there that I would say has got worse or hasn't improved or, you know, everybody has stepped their game up and I'm, I'm here for it. I'm excited about this season. Finally, like usually it's off to a, a rocky start with Freddie and whatnot, but like having Campbell as our backup and just having Joe Thornton. Mm, I yeah. like where you're, I like where you're going. I like yep, where you're I'm going. excited. Mm. And to add to your uh, Justin Hall dad's trip, it was both of those guys got their first goals. I thought yeah. so. I had to look I, it up. The same like, game. Same I had game? to look that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it might have been the same. Was. Yeah. Well, I think there might have been two games during the dad's trip, but maybe but if i feel like it might have been the same game i would almost bet money on it but i think, my I think that hall scored it was the first game then hall and dermot scored the second game i have nothing over the auditors yeah they were in new york yeah good call excellent once again carly one-ups us oh yeah yeah um i know so my trivia my game, dad would be proud 
game three. Uh, well, I can't say game three. Game, game two of the podcast here. Uh, yeah. Second game against the uh, the Senators. So it's kind of the opposite start uh, that we seen from the first game of the Senators where we opened the scoring in the first period. Yeah. Uh, this game, of course, Nick Paul, goal, whatever the hell that was. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people were up in arms on Twitter, but that too, I'm like, who who in the NHL even stops that? Nobody. Like Nobody. Yeah. No, it, it, that's just a. It was a weird bounce. It landed on his stick, and he literally turned and rifled it. It was just like yeah. one of those fluky, fluky yeah. things that like you would never be able to recreate if you tried to do that again. You know what well, I mean? I, I will. I will admit, uh, being damaged, uh, I I turned and I was like, do I just get up and walk away now? Do I burn? <laughs> do I burn my memorabilia? What do I do here? Like, right? My, I know. What is my I next said, step? There's no way they can lose to Ottawa two games in a row. There's yeah. no. Way. I was out with my friends, and I even had like my jersey on, and because it was my friend's birthday, it was he's a Habs fan, and I was watching it, saw that happen, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> I'm done. Like, head to toe leaves here, and uh, I had to watch that, but and it turned around. It was good. Yeah, but uh, we only had to worry about those crazy damaged thoughts for a few minutes until who yeah. scored jumbo love it oh, I, I, literally, so nice. I literally came out of my seat and i shouldn't be coming into my seat in game three of the season but yeah. I, I was like yeah because like like when does thornton not pass to matthews and <laughs> that's right you, <laughs> you know? that's what he's there to do really <laughs> i i feel like i've rewatched that goal like so many times or at least a yeah. gif of it and it's like you could see him looking over right over like him and Maddie are just like staring at yeah. each other and he said even in his interview that he said the goalie was cheating so I guess he means he was out of his crease a little bit or whatever that means yeah. um so he just shot it because they had Maddie covered and it was just no, yeah. he's, he he said Matthews. He said Matthews was covered, but he yeah. watched the replay. I don't know, man. He could have. I don't. I, don't I think know. what he means is the lane to pass him to was kind yeah, of yeah. like clogged, I suppose. But yeah, like. But I don't think so. See, I think that's, yeah. that's his, his, <laughs> his casual like, way of justifying yeah. it. But I think yeah. he, he he's a smart guy. Yeah. He, everyone knows he's going to pass to Matthews, and even the goalie knows. So he said, uh, "Let's yeah. not pass to Matthews." I, I really think that he made a conscious decision to to, uh, to fire that. Five hole or whatever. We're talking about Joe Thornton, so he's completely yeah. capable of scoring goals. He's just right. Like, he just choo- chooses so. not to. It's okay, he can st- he can still do it. Yeah, no, I I, I was I was pumped with that and seeing his reaction. I mean, he had he had a little kid reaction too, right? Oh my yeah. god! You can when you like I said, watching those replays, you can hear them all like cheering, like "woos" and the highs. And, oh, it was just yeah. it was. It was and the thing I've always special. said about the Leafs when they're smiling and carrying on, they're playing great hockey. They are like and, that uh, Carolina uh, game that. last year. Right? You, you see it go out throughout the whole Ottawa game, and then yeah. again after. It's yeah. just when they're Ooh. having fun, they're they're winning. They're oh, when they're mad. <laughs> oh yeah. I think yeah. Matthews is best when he's mad. I yeah. love I love Mad Matthews. Last oh, year when it, when he knocked down Shea Weber in that Montreal game. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He's, a, he's such a big guy that like I wish horse. I wish he would use his body more, yeah. and he's starting to, and I appreciate it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I know what you mean when he gets mad. It's just it's like this special, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, like, like, like Chad says, the guy's a horse and a beast. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like, it, it is what it yeah. is. So yeah. fast forward in that game, no point in beating this one to death, but I mean, uh, second period, Mariner pokes one in third yeah. period, Matthews pokes one in all three guys on that line, get a goal. They dominated play for, they had the puck, 50 I mean. minutes. I mean, I don't know. Like the 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 the, the, the senator never really got in that game. No, they doubled them shots. It was like yeah. 19 or 20 or something like that. They generated nearly 60 percent of the expected goals, over 71 percent of the shot attempts, and 65 percent of yeah, the even strength shots. Yeah, yeah, that's some solid stats. It's a big W. So aside from from the the, the Tim uh, Stitzel goal yeah that was like, awesome I mean, to see which yeah, was nice I, to see that was Cam- a beauty goal too i Cam- mean campbell had a sweetheart of a response yeah. to it because that's what he is <laughs> he how can, is like how, how can you not love that guy right? uh, like the he feels special puppy. he just yeah. i don't know yeah. i feel like he's someone who just comes in and like just brightens the room like you know the way oh, he yeah. is he just yeah. never has a crappy attitude he's always so cheerful and yeah, like, he, like that guy scored his first nhl goal on i'm pretty much you know, sniped him, and he's like, "Oh, I want to shake his hand." <laughs> yeah. Who says? Well, that? he knows he's number one of many, right? He's yeah. number one, a, a big career ahead of Stutzel, and it was great. Yeah, and then he, yeah, yeah, I suppose it was a cool he play. Scored it on him, right? 
Yeah, yeah. it was a cool plane. Uh, Campbell's a stand-up guy. Yeah, uh, I he love is. him. I, I, and you know what? I mean, we'll get to, to the goalie thing in a little bit very soon, actually. But uh, I really liked everything you've done since he came to the team. Like I, none of the losses he's been he he's been handed were his doing. I mean, he's always yeah. been he's always been steady in his crease. He's always been been there for the team. I don't know. I just like the guy. I like everything about him. So uh, good on Jack Campbell. I uh, I got nothing but nothing but praise for the guy. A welcome attitude in Toronto. Oh yeah, yeah. you better believe it's good it. for everybody. And it, yeah, and everybody seems to love him. Like even even Leafs Nation. Like there there hasn't been, like you said, the few games that he did lose last season weren't really his no. fault per se. The team just kind of give up or whatever the case may be. But I feel like Freddie loses a game and everybody has a meltdown. Campbell loses a game and they're like, oh, it's just Campbell. <laughs> yeah. Well, if Campbell was the number one, things would change. A hundred percent. People say that they want, like, oh, trade Freddie. We don't need Freddie now. I'm like, you don't want to say that. You don't want to see Freddie becoming day. a whipping boy now. It's like, yeah, come no. on. Uh, come on, guys right? are stud and he always has been. It's, it's his okay. job. Like, do you guys yeah. not forget every October he's had since he's been in – this franchise who is who would you choose to replace this guy like realistically really though who, like how was, like the who's thing gonna I fit seen, there the thing i seen on facebook the other day and it was um in the last under key for something like it's been 50 games or something and mm -hmm. since if you go back those 50 games the leafs are like tied with vegas and colorado and like winning percentage or something i forget right. exactly what it was yeah. so mm -hmm. i mean you Where's Freddie's love, right? Because no, I guarantee he steals you, lots of games. that was ninety-five percent Freddie. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a Freddie stat now that I I seen not long ago. I don't know the actual number. I don't know however many career wins he has. I think it's like as a Leaf now, uh, one hundred and thirty-five rings a bell. But anyway, uh, with the with the wind uh, against the Jets, which again we'll get to too sweet. Um, it gave him 135 wins as a Leaf. I think it was, or 100, however, however many wins it is, which matches the same amount of wins that Curtis Joseph had as a Leaf. Interesting. Yes. Right? Now, Freddie did it in 40 less games. Imagine. Right? So. And right, and Cujo was the best at the time. Right. Or well, like, like we I said, Cujo was an elite goaltender. There's a, thought, there's, a, yeah. there's a couple of goalies ahead of ahead of them on the all-time wins list, like Potvin, for example, who played mm -hmm. there longer. Mm -hmm. had, had more wins but he played a mountain more games That's so right. like i said when 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 all said and done and and you you compare fred's career down the road whenever if it's next year or if it's 10 years time when he's no longer a leaf mm -hmm. uh and you compare his stats against the all-time leaf he's gonna go down as one of the better yeah i mean yeah, no question absolutely and, and he should i mean he's yeah. played on a good team too mind you i mean like reimer would never have that opportunity he played on too far too bad of a team you know right and right. i feel i honestly feel bad because i feel like that's what happened to hutchinson too is like any yeah, teams so that he was in he was never given a fair shot you look at what he did in colorado last year in the playoffs yeah. and you tell me that there's something wrong with michael hutchinson yeah no. yeah no. it could be between his ears because of the toronto you know this pressure that they feel and the way that he feels now because of what have happened you know going forward if he ever does be in the crease again but I don't know. Well, as of it's 12 hours ago, he's a lot closer. He, he is. Right. I've seen that. I've seen he's that. In the taxi. Yeah, he's in the taxi squad. He's now our number three. So and Sheldon Keith, Sheldon Keith is apparently uh, keeping on the 11 4 as the seven defenseman for a bit. Hey. Yeah, he was talking about that before the season began. They were going to adopt that. They're going to do that. I guess yeah. that's maybe for letting in, too, I would hope, you know, to get yeah. him in some games. Well, and, and, and load management, man. I mean, when you're talking, oh, about, when you're talking about 12 forwards uh, playing two games back to back, it's a lot different than having six defensemen. I'm okay with at least having more defensemen. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah. They kind of need it, right? Oh, Keep them do. fresh. Listen to that extra games. shift can make all the difference. There, there's been some games I wish they'd skate three defensemen and two forwards because <laughs> they're dead. No, no, dead. <laughs> I've said that too. But, I've even uh, said, like, on the power play, why don't they just play five forwards sometimes? But then I'm like, ooh, not on this team. <laughs> then you pick Putt Riley there, and that's pretty much what you got. Yeah, true. So, mm. It's all right. We're all good. So we'll brief on the because we're we're eating time here like it's no one's business. Let's talk about the uh, the, the Winnipeg game briefly. Okay. I mean, when I when I think about the Winnipeg game, pure dominance comes to mind. It was an unexciting hockey game for me. It was like the Leafs didn't do anything stupid or crazy or leaf like they played they went, hockey. They went out and played hockey like a contender, yeah. and mm -hmm. it, it it was it was the most full 60 minute game i've watched in i don't know 
10 years. I don't even know when I've seen a game that was that was as complete as that. I mean, they they, they won puck battles. They, that second period they, was potent. They, they I'll just say that like, third period was a mess. So you're saying 60 minutes. I'm gonna was, say I'm gonna say 45. <laughs> well, okay, uh, okay, 50, 50, because 10 minutes or so in that third period was. Yeah, it was getting. It was uh, racy. They're getting getting pushback. At it least, was we'll, scary. at least we'll like, sit back on their heels if they get a bit of pressure. And Winnipeg's capable of doing that. I mean, right? no line well, A too, I'll, right? I'll, right? I'll, well, I'll agree with you. Yeah. The, uh, Sometimes I, I didn't mean to cut you. I didn't mean to cut you. Well, no, no, and, and that's fine. That's that's what this is all about. Because you are you are correct. I mean, there was a period in the third period where I come a little. I won't even say unhinged. Uh, you, they got some pushback. They got some adversity. Yeah. And After that Kyle well. Connor goal, there they, I found they, they got a bit of they got a bit of speed to them too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but again, they handled it well. Uh, they were able to stem that tide and and come out on the other side. So. I thought it was, like I said, it was one of the better games I remember watching as a fan. And Connor Hellebuck, uh, he was lights out the entire game. That oh, could have been, that could have been seven or eight goals. Oh, it hadn't been anybody eight. else in the league. And like, he, well, he had a nine nine six four percentage on the night. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right? Well, I mean, it was, well, they had like, well, that's, that was a sad stat of all that. They had, yeah. The Jets had like three or four shots in the second period. And one oh, one my God. Shot <laughs> yeah, at one point, at one point, I think. He had a nine shot think... power play, and he's stop them all i'm like that's sick or is that was, the, uh, the one they scored on anyway yeah i forget now I still know nine shots about. on in two minutes it's pretty he's, crazy yeah he's he's vesna like he's probably going to win a vesna again right yeah. Yeah. That's good. no and and he always shows up against the least whatever it is which is really weird because he got no real affiliation with ontario i don't think he's an american right yeah. he actually, well i was actually wondering that last night and my boyfriend said he was i think he said he was canadian but maybe he's wrong well, let's find out. Now I have to look. Says. Connor Hellebuck. But he has a different last name, so that's why I was like. I'm saying he's a Yank because I, I just. He I is that. from Michigan. Oh, he's USA, yeah, Michigan. Okay, so he's least like I had no idea. I thought he might have been from like another whole other like you know. So he's from another little small township, just like uh, Kyle Connor, from a. Yeah, from the state of hockey, is it? Gross. Yeah, Michigan. <laughs> well, a hockey town. Yeah, Minnesota. Hockey Town. Yeah, a team of Minnesota is the state of hockey. Yeah, right. yeah, Minnesota, Michigan, Hockey Town, Detroit, yeah. Michigan. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think we need to beat that to death anymore. We talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I mean, it, it was those three games really. I mean, I don't know which least team we're going to see coming out of it. I hope we see the one that we've seen against the Jets because it was fantastic. Yeah. One thing but, we did miss from the Ottawa game is losing Nick Robertson. Oh, like first shoot. shift. Oh, God. <sighs> but. There's like no surgeries. It's like four weeks. Hopefully, four weeks. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, he comes back weeks. and it's okay. Yeah, I feel really was, bad for the guy, man. He really, he really put in a, 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 you know, the college effort. To, he was, he was going for it. He was looking to make the team. This is his time, yeah. The couple of shifts that he even, that even the couple of shifts that he, that he got were no, he was noticeable. He was impactful. He, he, was, he skates like the wind, man. He, he, makes, yeah. he always just like there's, you know, when I say to you to us, us as newbies, you give her, mm. and yeah, like he's giving her all the time <laughs> yeah no, he's, he's yeah. 110 percent. and he plays with a lot of heart too that was his mo uh with yeah. sue so now the kid's gonna be a star uh he, he's wait. he's he's got top six all all over him all over him. um yeah. so it's only, that's only a matter of time i if not like i said if, if at some point in this season he's not in the top six because of injury or just sheer determination i'd be amazed mm-hmm. unless somebody else is just right. playing lights out and that's it I mean, yeah, it's totally possible. And then also, unfortunate. What are your thoughts? Uh, no more Kapanen on this team. Sorry, Carly. No more Kasperi Kapanen. But I was with, just watching with... the Pittsburgh game before we dropped. Before right. we got on here, yeah, just looking at him. You still look fast. Scrappy Cappy. Yeah, <laughs> he almost got a goal actually. Well, my question is, I watched it. Who's faster, Kapanen or Robertson? Oh God. <laughs> That's be an know. interesting one, man. I feel like I haven't got to see enough of Robertson yet. Like that's Ryan. Because Kapanen's when when those fast. yeah, when he turned those jets on, man, like especially mm-hmm. out on a penalty kill and he managed to flick that puck up and he'd get it every time. I'll tell you, Mikhaev is no slouch either. I was just gonna say Mikhaev is another one that we got that's really, really fast. I think what makes Robertson look fast is because when he's skating fast, he's, he's hustling. So much yeah, he's yeah, he's so really much, pumping. Where, yeah. Whereas Mikhaev, when he skates, he's just got he's that big, long stride. Long stride smooth, yeah. that Russian skating, right? Uh, just seeing pull away though. Right? Yeah, yeah, just separation <laughs> every is, time. It's insane, right? Yeah. 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 No, I love it. No, um, 
so we beat that the we, we beat death the justin hall stuff i want to talk about that like i said we've uh, chatted about the nick robertson thing all good um what i'm curious about and, and something i i haven't had a chance to talk to you guys off camera about it but uh things that things that you things that you've liked so far in the season and maybe some things that you're kind of like eh, sketchy on any thoughts <laughs> Uh, I can say things I've liked, which we've already talked about, but I'll add in, I was going to say, I like JT and how that line has been going, like with him and VC and Nylander, it's been actually surprisingly really good. Um, cause I wasn't sure how I'd feel about uh, Jimmy VC, but he's been impressing. Um, but I'm kind of worried about our power play. Yeah. Okay. I can just see because that. it it hasn't been producing the way that it should and i know there's a few new faces and there's probably some new you know things and there's having a new pk coach and uh power play coach or whatever they got this off season but um i don't know i know it'll take a little time so that's probably about the only thing that i'm really worried about okay so yeah. far for me uh after getting like the last say one and a half games it's not much i would change yet uh I really like, obviously, John Tavares, the machine. He's just out there getting it done on every foot of the ice. It's fantastic. Justin Hall stepping up. I mean, I even like, I want to see Lightning come in, but at whose expense? Yeah. I don't know yet. I do want to see all these new faces get a chance. That's the big thing I do want to change without upsetting this thing they got rolling now. But I just want to see a couple of new faces like Brooks get in. And I want to see, uh, you know, Barbanov get in, you know, a little bit more. And you get some I minutes, know, like, meaningful minutes, yeah. And then if you see like, you have uh, Mikheyev and Hyman and VC. I mean, I feel like they could, yeah. you know, depending depending on the matchups, they get already better off in different lines. I guess that's going to come with time. But I would like to see those guys interchange a little bit more. I liked Mikheyev up with um, JT last year too. Yeah. So that would be nice to see because before his injury, he was actually meshing really well with those guys. Now, I think and Marner was back on the line then, but him and Nylander have some really good chemistry. Mm. So. And Makai was um, looking like he never missed anything. No, so. no, mm. not at all. I do want to add one thing, though. Sorry. Yeah, go, Can we go. please talk about the little bit of attitude we seen last night from Mitch Marner? What, oh. was, what <laughs> was that? And uh, are we going to have, have some more of it? Because, like, I liked it. Yeah. I'll tell you what finally, I liked. Finally. Finally. I'll tell you what I liked the most about that. And it wasn't even Mitch Marner's attitude. Well, I liked, I liked Mitch Marner's attitude. Don't get me wrong. The, what I liked the most about it was that one, JT. he had he had he had the gonads to go and, and push back and, and do his things. He felt I mean, obviously I looked at the play again after and looked like Buddy went after him after the shot was released, more or less. Like I mean, shot was hit. in the net. Yeah, like, yeah, it was pretty you know, close. It was so pretty close. I think there was a you know, he had his piece to say where I don't know if in previous years he would have, because the following shift, twenty two seconds left, guess who hops over the board just to make sure everybody cool here? Everyone okay? Mr. Mr. Wayne Simmons. Simmons. Oh, right? Yeah. So the next, we, they got the, somebody now to like well, back them up. The, the game is over. Uh, 22 seconds left. That's your time to go out there and say, no, if anybody got any issues with what just happened here. Right. And uh, nobody seemed to have an issue with it at that point. It's funny yeah. enough. Hey, stranger, that works. See, it Even reminded now. me of uh, the time that Batista tried to, I don't know if you're into baseball, but he tried to take out Aurora's legs. Sorry, yeah. in a second, although he knew he was out. The same kind of thing. He knew he was getting the empty net goal. He tried to take him out anyway, kind of. Yeah, that's how and I yeah. felt about it. Batista like, got were a you... punch in the face, and then Pion could have got one too. Yeah, he should, he deserved it because it's like, yeah. what were you trying to do, man? Were you trying to you know, slew foot me or like maybe go head first into the boards? Like, what was the point here? Well, I got nine I, more I, meetings. Yeah, exactly. And I kind of liked how JT kind of came up because um, – What's his name was there? Shifley. Uh, Shifley. Shifley was there. Like, what was he getting up in Marner's face about? Yeah, he's, you know, he gets hot easy. And, I mean, he's yeah. losing. He wants to push back. Yeah. And, like, man, look at the look at the clock. Like, there's literally whatever was 17 yeah. seconds left. Like, yeah, it's just boys go to bed. Boys being yeah. boys at that point. But, yeah, yeah. no, a key, key point in that game, obviously, it was, it, was, it was just something that I don't think we're used to seeing. And no. which, which is what gets me to what I like about what I've seen so far. And what I like, there's two things I like. One is a very minor thing. I really like Alexander Kerfoot this year, even though he hasn't hit the score sheet. I think he looks mm -hmm. good. He got he a goal last game. Oh, right. He got a right, goal. Right, 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 right. Yeah, he got a goal. Was it the first game, first Ottawa game or the second <sighs> Ottawa game? Second Ottawa second game. Second Ottawa game. game, man. It's getting um, hard to handle. I was literally like bitching about him. And I was like, oh my God, what is he doing? Oh, and my boyfriend was like, 
he's going to score a goal. Just watch. And literally 30 seconds later, bing. I don't know if second. Anyway, he calls matter. it every yeah. time. No, he, he he's looked good. He's looked, but again, he's got great wingers. He got two dogs for wingers. Yeah. Uh, I always and forever will like Zach Hyman. He'll go down as one of my favorite Leafs of all time when he's no longer a Leaf. Sure. He's a he dog. Retires a leaf. Hash, hashtag uh, Hyman for Legends role. Mm-hmm. Um, um, trending retire, on Twitter. Retire a Leaf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, I love the guy, and he and he he's, he's, he's looked. His hands look oddly better this year. He's, he's picking up passes, which he wouldn't have picked up two years ago. I feel like he's gained right. a bit of confidence because he finally, like last year, made that jump from third line to first line, and now he's kind of back again. So I wonder, is he trying to... Well, 20 goals to do that to you. He was trying to handle, <laughs> he was trying to handle passes from Nealander or Matthews. I mean, that's... Yeah. It's right, not and he, he got to up his game. If you want to stay up, where are you too? Yeah. He he looks he looks fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think I think Keith as a, a being the quality coach he is, uh, he put this to these guys says, okay, you're not on the third line, you're on another line. You know exactly. You're, 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 a, you're, B, and C. Yeah, I mean we've got three lines here that we can roll out that can cause some damage, and I and I that's what I love about not necessarily loading up the Tavares line. Uh, VC looks fine. I yeah. mean, you could throw Hyman there, and they would be more productive. I do believe. But it that. makes our third line better the, by the having third, Hyman the third down there. Line, third line is yeah. far better with Hyman on it. I do believe. And sure. if if I'm not mistaken, there was a few times last night where Keith threw out that third line against the Shifley line. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's like Shut he down. obviously, yeah, he has faith in them, and it gives them a bit of you know confidence, and it pays off, and I'm yeah. loving it. All four lines can get it done. A hundred percent. Five on five. But the one Specs big up, thing, like ten and zero, face off, office, face like, off, oh. nut. <sighs> That's what he came Seventy percent, right? For four games, I mean, jeez, I know he's like doing a lot of like face off and get off, but man, that's, that's Yannick Perron days yeah. of face offs. No, he's he, he's he's been he's been a stud in in the circle, no doubt about it. Yeah. He's he's looked okay on the ice too. I mean, there's no there's no rag on Spets, so he, he's he's all drive. So it's the end of the road for him. He's 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 all in right now. So he yeah. waved. It was a safe bet that he's not going to go anywhere. But the so one it was thing easy cap space mm-hmm. shuffle. So yeah, no, absolutely. And and, and they played it right through the agent too. I mean, it's just yeah. greasy, greasy as that, all hell, but it's that's leaf. That was done for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Even before that, I even said like if he gets waived, I mean, out of respect for the player, I don't think anybody's going to try to pick him up because they know no. he doesn't want to go anywhere. He doesn't want to. I feel he like that have would have been the greasiest move. For a GM to do would be to put an offer in on him. It would be an attack on Toronto, not on Spezza. Not on Spezza, yeah. exactly. It would have been like, can you and see you Mark, Mark Bergevin or someone doing that? I can, but and if he retired, yeah. if he retired, couldn't he just not resign at the league minimum yet again? I've, I've read he would retire. He could retire, and then the team would probably um, just have to buy out his contract or not buy out his contract. I forget what it is. Terminate. Terminate the contract yep. and then put them back on waivers where then Toronto could then pick them back up. <laughs> exactly right. So it'd be a waste of their time. So it's, yeah. it was like kind of an ace move, you know? You yeah, yeah. You're up your sleeve and Why not everybody knows it. Yeah. And knowing that Dell was going to go, it gives them options until they get Robertson yeah. on the IR. Yeah, absolutely. I honestly kind of have more faith in Hutchinson, I think, than what I might have had in Dell. So I'm, well, I, people were upset will. about it, but I'm, I'm okay. I can't wait to see him play, though. I think I think you're looking at uh, two and the same, really. I think you're looking at two 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 goalies that are comparable in in, in what you're getting. You're getting capable NHL backups in Hutchison or Dell. Yeah. Uh, at, at some level, there's, trust me, there's there's goalies in this league, and several of them on on uh, on the Oilers who are not as good as any of the goalies in our system. That's, yeah. And, and exactly. I will die on yeah. that hill. I mean, I there's, there's some bad goalies who are playing number one spots right now. I was uh, I was kind of like shocked that Edmonton didn't get them, but it was because of their waiver priority. They yeah. got a terrible. They got a terrible spot this year because of last year. So, and, well, they exactly. had cla- they had claimed a guy too right before that. They, they had claimed a guy. They had. Before. They got a. They did get another goalie, I believe. Anybody I hear him before? No. Nope. No, he's like out of the LA system. I'm like, yeah. it's sad because it, all the firepower that Edmonton does have, that's yeah. where they're lacking. Oh God, and it's, it's hard like, to watch. Are they still like? There. They have won. Have they not won a game this season? Or are they won one? I think. I forget what they're what their uh, stats are right now but they're, not, watch the city they're not great it doesn't matter <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You know, i know the pain we know this pain of no goaltending no exactly defense. listen been exactly. there done that it's it's, it's, it's rough yeah they're but, fifth yeah. they're fifth right now in the, in the north division back to my question you guys caught yes. me off you're too excited sorry uh, lots to talk about lots to talk about there is but the one thing 
that that really stands out to me this year and i don't even know what it is I, I, normally i always feel like i've got an answer like I, people are always like oh what do you think of this what do you think of that and i usually got an opinion but there's something about the leafs this year that feels different um and i can't put a finger on it to be honest with you i don't know if it's just the demeanor around a team or maturity maybe a little bit of maturity i hope that's what it is because they badly need it but like it, it seems like they're, they're a little more intense uh right. maybe maybe it's the veteran leadership i don't know i can't put my finger on it yet but i will and we'll discuss it at some point during this podcast i'll say aha i know what it that's was it. more faith but, in the guys around them but they maybe. feel they, they, they feel different to me uh different mm -hmm. than, 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 than past can... the past lease groups and and i and, and i'm good with that because I, I i've been sadly disappointed for way too many years mm -hmm. even when i'm sadly disappointed like game two uh i try to remember remember seven years ago remember when we used to lose How seven to two was? eight to one remember those days yeah, yeah. Well, when, i hope i look back i hope in seven games i want to look back and say okay yeah we're we're still on that feeling yeah you know? exactly. i hope so and so, i yeah. i really do too i think that i think they're gonna do something this year i really i hope so at least because it's still gonna be a tough division i mean oh, you just sorry. saw what montreal did to, or edmonton even though you know you know they got some talent going on over there well, they could do kind of what the Leafs used to do is, okay, we don't have defense or we don't have goalie. Let's just outscore our opponents. But they can't even do that right now. No, and in Montreal, also, if you want to relate to past Leaf day, days, where you have an underwhelming group, a little bit better, come out and overachieve and then fall off later. I mean, I kind of feel like that, no offense to like any Habs fans, because I'm sure there might yeah, be some okay who might watch it. this, but... Huh because they get pretty fired up but like and it could happen to the Leafs too like they're on this high right now and it's yeah. gonna come down because we've seen it happen time and time again with Carey Price you can't rely on Carey Price but I gotta say bringing in like Josh Anderson and a couple new guys that they got they got a team they got a good team so well seems the the pot's calling the kittle black hair about getting fired up well how do we feel about uh, cross-checking the stars in front of the net there Kylie uh Okay, well, when I played hockey, I was a defenseman, defense woman, sorry. Um, person. person. I, exactly. I on, feel Connor. like there is a difference between trying to break someone's spine or trying to push someone out of the front of the net. Yeah. You know what I mean? And literally, it fires me up because watching someone like Shea Weber beat on a man's back, whether it be Austin Matthews or it be anybody because no. i watched the game last night and he got a penalty for it literally as i was watching it like you piece of shit literally is what i felt they have no protection in their backs like that's why they always say about like hockey if you're gonna block a shot don't turn there's nothing behind you to, to protect you so like why yeah. are you doing that like i don't know it pisses mm. me off because like i said there's a million other ways that you can tie up someone's stick or you can i don't know shove them out of the way you don't have to beat on them with a weapon they're gonna keep doing whatever they can get away with to be most effective. I get yeah, that. Absolutely. It's, it's crazy. And you know, they all do it. I mean, you I know, see like, I just, probably some probably breaks some, some, you know, break a stick off on somebody's back. This right. Year. I've just seen Chara happened. do it in the game, like the Washington game. I just seen Chara do it. They're but going like, to overtime. Just one second. I'm getting the remote. They're going to overtime right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's oh, Crosby just scored. Overtime winner. Crosby just scored. That quick. Huh? Anyway, Sorry. that's cool. I just figured I'd have it on while I was talking. Was don't listen, guys. Don't, let me, don't let me interrupt you here. Like, I mean, if you're busy. <laughs> no, but the, you, the the thing with the the thing with the cross checking, what bothers me, what really gets me, is that it's one thing. I mean, like again, the NHL is is a game of skirting the rules. I mean, like Chad said, you're going to exploit the rules to your advantage wherever you can. Same thing with these line changes. Like, we got too many men on the ice. You get too many men on the ice every time there's a line change. Now, essentially, what, yep. what what's acceptable, right? And we got nailed with it the other day. It was just a ridiculously long. That scene. was, yeah, he was in but, no rush. Yeah, but uh, what gets me about the cross checking is that if 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 you're cross checking with the intent of knocking someone down, which is theoretically the idea, you know, um, this keeping the stick low and in, into the small of their back, like Matthews was getting it the other day, that's not going to knock a guy down. That's only that's only going to injure injuring someone. them. 
you're right. injuring them like their spleen their kidneys like everything is back there and there is a part where your pants end and your bat your yeah. shoulder pads begin where there's absolutely nothing and then I remember after that game there was posts going around about I forget who the player was but you might know from back in the day who wore something that lacrosse player yeah the, that the lacrosse players would wear and this is why because that even back then but that's why there's a penalty called cross checking because you're not allowed to do it yeah yeah no oh, fair and uh, and I mean I think a lot of people are of the same mindset uh, at least at least once it happens to their guys mm-hmm. I mean dry saddle got a bad yesterday Matthew's he got did. a bad the players are not complaining about it uh, but I think they're not going to because they're going to be uh, called pussies or bitches yeah, or something, yeah. right? Because nobody wants to see know. the game get softened up too much. No. But I mean, there's got to be I mean, there's got to be a limit. Like I said, you can literally put your stick up against someone and then push them. That's fine. But why are you doing yeah. this? Like I don't understand what that is. What you're trying to approve, like uh, trying to achieve. That's not cool. Well, we got her fired up. I like it. I told right. you, don't bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk for a minute about uh, away from the Leafs. Let's get away from the Leafs for a bit. Uh, Jake Voracek, post game press conference. Uh, for, love yeah, it. Yeah, I love a I love a, a Phil Kessel type answer. I, yeah. I really do. And yeah. I don't know the guy's name. I I, I did, but uh, and is he relevant? Because obviously he's not not the. Uh, not the golden boy of, of reporters, but Voracek went off in not so many words, basically called the guy a, a, a weasel. And, yeah, a weasel. And, and he's some, cursed on him. And used some choice words, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically saying that the guy's going to write whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Um, Sounds like someone we know in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. There, there's been a lot, there's been a lot of complaints online about several reporters in Toronto. I mean, Steve Simmons gets a lot of flack for it. I mean, he writes <sighs> for the Sun, uh, Sun, Toronto Sun? Toronto Sun, yeah. Yeah. yeah um takes a lot of flack for uh, for his writing style a uh, very controversial writer um you got to wonder how how much how much longer players are going to be putting up with this certainly if you see you see Voracek do it get away with it no no can. no real recourse uh what's to stop you from calling out a guy who's uh, not necessarily well, didn't he, some... he got a bit of heat for uh trying to break the news on Austin Matthews and COVID wasn't it yeah. Yes, and like, they, like they lost a lot of respect from them. And said, you know, we he, were trying to prepare a uh, thing, and you're just out blurting it out, like having yeah. a bit of respect. Pretty sure they revoked his uh, pa- uh, press badge, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. He hasn't been into like MLSE since. Yeah, crazy. Eh? That's cool. And there was another, uh, was, was, was was it him that done the, the Reimer concussion thing too, or was it somebody else? Remember they called his mom, one of the reporters. God. Probably was him, honestly. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it's it was a piece of work. I, I can't but... remember, but I mean, it was it was somebody in the in the local Toronto media there who, who after Reimer got injured that time, went and hid and, and called his family, called his mom, and talked about, you know, basically got her to talk about what was wrong with him. I yes. kind of remember that now that you're talking yes. about it. So this I mean, this is, this is this this is not a new thing to the NHL. We're talking about Reimer, who was there again six exactly years ago. Years so this ago. this is not uh, this is not new news. But I don't know. I just want to get your guys' take on it. I was uh, it, it was a weird one for me, and kind of caught me off guard. Certainly from a guy like Voracek, who who is not noted for being out there in the media. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So at least not, not in my mind. I just wonder there? if uh, the I just wonder how the uh, the team brass felt about it. That's what I was looking at. Are they gonna you know give him a talking yeah. to or? Especially Philly being such like yeah, they're a pretty hostile environment. Yeah, you know what it, I mean. Being in like uh, one of the OG teams and whatnot, not original. Yeah. But... See, season one, episode two, guest Jake Voracek on uh, Deke Snipes Philly podcast. Maybe yeah. that's pretty awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty sick. Wouldn't it? <laughs> no, but I, I really, I, it, again, it was noteworthy from this past week. I just wanted to mention it because it, it was, it was interesting to me. It's not something you see every day. You know, someone get fired up by a reporter. More often than not, it would be, you know, a Tortorella type. You know, <laughs> it's pretty funny I just to the, watch. Uh, was it connect me? Tra- yeah, next Travis connect me. Yeah. Chucked on his water. I was like, yes, yes. and then the guy goes and asks him a question. He was just like, yeah. like well, he could not keep yeah. his mouth closed. He, he held it together during he did, during, during the, the whole war. thing. He was yeah. just like, you just see the. Hmm? Then, then he kind of bust when it like. Did I just hear that? Yeah. It's just like, is this really happening right now? Oh, that was, funny. Uh, that was awesome. So funny. That was good. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate that actually. And, me too. You know, I feel like more players would do that if they could. Like the cursing was kind of unnecessary, knowing that you know it is going to be on TV or radio or whatnot. But um, I like I lost my connection, did I? Yeah, you did. Oh yeah. Give me one second, guys. But 
you know what I mean? He still could have called this guy out without the curse words. Yeah, I guess he's just my absolutely opinion. fed up. Yeah, I don't blame him. Obviously, if maybe if we were Philly fans, we would probably feel about this guy like we do with Simmons. So I just feel like gritty, you know, just get gritty in the press conference. Yeah, That's what you're going to get all day long, right? Yeah, gritty can kick Buddy's butt. That's a good representation of how the uh, how they do it there. What's going on, Ryan? What did you do? I don't know. Oh. Some camera difficulties. We'll go with this one. <laughs> cool. We'll finish her with this one. There know. you go. But uh, notice, and 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 that's that's literally all I wanted to get to was was to see what your guys' take on it was. And I think everyone's kind of feeling the same way about it. So mm -hmm. that's excellent. Yeah. Now I wouldn't want to see it every single time. It's special because it was like such a rare moment. But uh, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Now, uh, with with I want to talk about teams outside the Leafs again who are. I think overperforming or at least performing incredibly well and underperforming. So we'll talk about the overperformers first. And I think the Islanders, I, I don't want to say they're overperforming. They are a good team. They've proven that yeah. they're a good team, but uh, Varlamov now has posted back-to-back -back shutouts. So it's... is that, a, is that a product of a star goalie or is that a product of a, I don't think we're going to see a Chicago run there. I just think after, you know, we'll just wait and see 10 games there's a bunch more and you get like a Dubnik run that he's doing or if like they have a Chicago win streak yeah uh, I'd, I'd be shocked it's yeah. really shocked it's it's kind of, I don't know it's yeah but like you said Ryan is it a product of good goaltending or is it good defense is it what is it uh, and to be honest it, I, it's I, not gonna happen it's not gonna look at the shot count it's impossible no and I and and, and, and this is just it. I mean, I'm not I'm not familiar enough with the. I know I know obviously the uh, the Islanders have always played a bit of a hard nosed game. Uh, they're aggressive and and whatnot. Uh, they got some burly type defensemen who uh, who can play the puck. But uh, again, I was very I shouldn't say surprised. I mean, he's capable of it. He's always been a, a solid goaltender, but just kind of kind of caught shots. my eye. Yeah, so I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at, right? They, they, it's they, a one goal game for against Boston with a four goal game against uh the rangers mm -hmm. wow so too bad but a one goal game a one goal game against boston oh wait no because wait game. 27 shots so that's i would say that was verlama rangers versus islanders so ranger rangers beat them five to nothing who's in it there oh uh, they had who did they have in it where is it i'm looking at the wrong team Ilya sorokin five goals against so it must have been a back-to-back could have been yeah well let's talk i was about just the, wondering about that loss i was gonna say if our llama but no go ahead let's not let's shout about the underperformers i mean we, we touched on it briefly earlier but what about the oil or oh, the oilers man they just lost back-to-back -back games against montreal yeah they've Everybody. only had one game one win this season defense and goaltending can't yeah. win without it no but there's no scoring depth either chat i mean they're, they're a one-line team if there was well, ever I mean, a definition of it man. yeah the other team's scoring and getting all the momentum it's taking all the steam out of their game it's hard to come back, even if you have the best scores in the world. If the other guys are up one to nothing, two to nothing, three to nothing, it's hard to get up there and score goals and get two and three and four back. You know, no, when the other are, team takes um, all the scene. The Leafs are favorites to win for tomorrow night, too. So it's not looking great for the Oilers in regards to like the odds, which we know obviously have, aren't great because they have no wins. But yeah, like you said, they have a one line, literally one line. Yeah. The rest uh, of the team is full of nobodies. No, they're they're one injury away from finishing below Ottawa in the standings. I mean, yeah, Mamoto's looked great. He's coming up this year, but I mean, he's going he's to be a good poor player. Timing. It's like poor timing. He's playing well, but the rest of the team is not going to done. Do you want to so know what's going to happen? Because we're talking about this, the Leafs are going to lose tomorrow night now. And uh, Adam Larson, I was going to say, he's, he's been <laughs> underwhelming so far too. That's very cynical. <gasps> Sorry, it just uh, came in my mind. Well, not superstitious, so Lars. To, to me, to me, uh, Larson will forever, for the rest of his life, underperform, given who he was traded for. Uh, it's just, it was just such a poor, poor trade. If they had traded anybody other than Taylor Hall, like if they would have traded Nuge and maintained Hall. Well, I mean, uh, what's what's Hall got? Like three or four goals now, or not maybe not that many, but he's, he's got and several. Hall does, gets the MVP. You know, he's he's, he's doing, the MVP, exactly. Yeah. So he's doing quite well. Let me just have a look. Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall's tied with Mariner, six points. And he's playing with Buffalo, right? right. In line with Jack Eichel. So tearing it up. I'm gonna have a quick peek here. At yeah, goals. if they would have just kept him right now and said mm -hmm. like came out with McDavid, can you imagine? Oh my god. You uh, can't keep all those firsts. No, it's just yeah, it's not happening. Don't get me started on that. 
Could have, could have kept one though. <laughs> really well, though. I mean, I, uh, you know, if they were going to solve mean, the problem in Edmonton right now, I mean, you can say bought a note. Yeah. Yeah, Same you thing can't that's keep going to hold the value right now. Yeah, you Absolutely. can't keep them all. So I mean, you know, they got rid of these guys and never got the right pieces back. Oh, then okay. Mr. Breaks. It is. It is indeed. No, maybe maybe Hall ends up back there next year. Let's see. What do you think? I can't see it happening. He moves around quite often. So what's so. he making eight million this year? And if he has another good year, I can't see him getting less. Where are they going to fit him? Especially when they need defense and goaltending. They have to move somebody. That's the only way he'd end up back there. Yeah, no, they'd have to move out uh, Nugent Hopkins, and even then, it'd be, it'd be they'd be up against it's, the cap. So, no, it uh, it, it is. I don't know it's famous. I'm famous for saying, but it is what it is with, with Ottawa right now. We've yeah. we've we've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. I feel bad for any Oilers fans out there who managed to suffer through our 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 Leafs praising to get to this point, <laughs> only to be like, yeah, told, told that you're crying. It's I apologize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> too funny so anything you guys want to talk about uh with regard to things you've seen over the last uh, last little while or last few days um i'm pretty much getting to the end of what i had on my plate of things i want to discuss with you guys yeah uh, i think we Same. covered uh i think we covered yeah three games and a bunch of other stuff and individual players i think we're doing all right so far so you want to talk yeah. about anything that we want to talk about later? Like, I want to talk about the uh, Newfoundlanders playing abroad. Something yeah. we would like to talk about. Yeah, that would that'd be a good chat, a good topic for uh, for Definitely. episode two. Next time. We'll, we'll look into that. That'd yeah. be great. There are some, for anybody out there who doesn't know, there's a couple of ex, uh, ex-growlers, ex-Newfoundlanders who were playing for the growlers mm-hmm. who were gone abroad and they were tearing it up overseas. We'll yep. talk about that some more in, uh, in episode two. But uh, if there's nothing else, I guess we'll shut her down. If uh, if you like what you're seeing, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, you can follow us as well on uh, Facebook, Facebook slash DeekSnipeSelly and DeekSnipeSelly.ca. Mm-hmm. So for on behalf of Kylie and Chad and myself, peace out. Okay. Cheers. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.